Welcome to the video. So we're going to be talking about the DJI Mini 2 and the DJI Fly app settings. So if it's Christmas Day when you're watching this, Merry Christmas and congratulations on your new drone. If you're watching this early, then stick around, go make yourself a coffee or a cup of tea and we're going to go through all the settings on here. And I'm going to be showing you some of the crucial settings that you need to change first before you even fly this drone. So I know you're going to be itching to get this drone up in the air, but there are some crucial settings and setup we need to do. So first get your controller, make sure you get the controller sticks from the bottom and then you screw them into the two position mounts on the thumb wheels. Now the actual controller is really straightforward and simple to use. Make sure the middle part here is in normal, not cine or sport, keep it in normal for now and connect this to the bottom of your phone. If you're using a USB-C phone, you will have different connections in the box. For my example, I'm using iOS. Now these two buttons don't do anything but this button here is your record button and also how you take photos quickly on the remote control this is the gimbal slider wheel allows you to change the orientation of the gimbal and also zoom in on the zoom function this doesn't do anything and this is just a fan on the back don't worry about that this button here allows you to show you how much battery life you've got left on your remote control this allows you to switch between video and photos and this button over here is an fn button we'll talk about this throughout the video but it's a really functional button no pun intended okay the actual drone itself make sure you have the latest version of the dji fly app for me i'm using 1.5.1 at the current time of recording this video on the ios store if you're not on ios you need to go to the dji download center just type that in on google and then download the app on your device for android once you've connected the drone and the controller you'll see this screen so don't worry about everything else we'll go through that in a separate video just click go fly so in go fly the first thing you need to do is do a compass calibration as you can see in the top corner you're going to be greeted with all these error messages don't worry about it at all it's really straightforward and simple to do have a few practice goes at this and then make sure you're confident know what you're doing just click calibration and then click start now what you want to do is rotate the drone 360 degrees really easy to do all you need to do is do that and then it will tell you to do a vertical orientation so just move it in a vertical manner and that's it it shouldn't take more than 10 seconds and and then those pre-flight errors will start to disappear. So let's now just change some of those most important settings. Look in the top right hand corner, those three dots, click on them there. And then you'll see here, we have safety, control, camera, transmission. We're gonna concentrate on safety. So safety is so important. This allows you to change your max altitude anywhere from 15 meters to 500 meters. Now use that based on your actual location. And then your max distance, if you're a beginner, maybe keep it at maybe around 100 meters, all the way up to 500. If you find your drone isn't going very far at all have a look at these settings now your max return to home altitude needs to be higher than the tallest building or object in your area so if you've got some trees or buildings make sure it's going to be high enough to clear them if you lose your signal how are we getting on so far? Let's look at advanced safety settings. Now, don't be afraid to repeat some of these chapters if I'm going too fast for you. So advanced safety settings, you've got return to home, you've got descend and hover. Now, depending on which area you're flying in, if you're, if you're static and on land or on a boat, these are going to be crucial. So let's just an example for 80% of the time, you want it set to return to home. So if you lose a signal, it will come back to you automatically. If you click descend, it's going to just descend if it loses the signal so i wouldn't ever select descend don't select that hover is perfect for us if you're on a boat or a moving object and you lose signal you would want it to then hover so then you can maybe drive that boat nearer to the drone and regain control you don't want it to come back to its return to home starting point which could be on land nowhere near where you are so making sure that this is set accordingly if you do lose a signal which does happen is really important make sure you select the appropriate one. Now you're gonna want your drone set up how you want it. So for units, do you want kilometers an hour? Do you want it meters per second? Do you want it miles per hour? By going into units and changing this, then you can have it set to how you want. So I'm gonna, for today's example, set it to miles per hour. Once you've done that, we can move on to the next bit, which is gonna be the front LED on the drone. Now this is disabled by default. So I would select and change this. Just gives you that extra light to be able to see the drone when it's coming towards you. So I have mine set 
set and what I find to be the best and brightest one is I have it to breathe in and I also have it to a blue color. You can change the color by clicking on these uh, icons here, but I find the blue is right about the brightest one between this and the white. If your drone's making some funky moves, then make sure gimbal mode is set to follow mode. FPV is fun, but for today's example and for beginners, keep it under follow. Now upwards gimbal rotation is also selected off. You want to select this on. This then allows you to rotate that gimbal more than the default setting. So right now I can't adjust that gimbal at all. But if we switch this on, you can now see that I can now, using that gimbal rotation wheel, I've got an extra 20 degrees of upwards rotation, which is brilliant if you're looking up at a building, or maybe you can't go high enough, that is fantastic. On iOS we have the option to turn phone charging on or off. So this will charge your phone whilst connected to the remote controller on android it's going to charge automatically but if you're in a really hot location you don't want your phone becoming really warm so in that situation turn it off but for everything else you can charge your phone whilst using this the next one to customize is the button customization. Remember that FN button we showed you at the start of the video? So this allows you to customize it and it will do certain things. So on this menu now, if you tap it, you can change it to do different functions. So I have mine set to have the exposure locked, but you can go through here and change these to whatever you wish. You can also double tap it and it will also do different things. So have a play with that. All right, let's get that drone in the air and it's important to understand and change some of the settings when the drone's in the air as well. So your battery indicator, super important. Make sure you're constantly looking at this to see how much battery you've got left. That will go down rapid depending on how far away you are from yourself as well. You've also got to check your signal as well, making sure you've got a strong signal and also your satellite icons as well. Do you have a strong satellite signal? How many satellites are connected? Keep checking that all the time as well. It's, it's good to know about these to prevent problems occurring. Let's now look at some of the video functions. So you've clicked on this button here and now under video settings. If you look at the bottom of the screen where it says res and FPS, this allows us to change the frame rate and the quality of this video. So it's going to be set at default to 2.7K. Now we don't want to be using 2.7K unless you're doing slow-mo because in slow-mo it goes up to 60 FPS which will allow you to slow that footage down. You want to just use 4K30 or 4K24 or if you're doing slow-mo 2.7K. 7k you can change the exposure value as well by you can increase it and decrease it by clicking on this menu here and just sliding your finger across now i always find that this drone in auto overexposes the video quite a lot and also in photos as well so i would recommend having it set to minus 0.3 if you're going to be using auto settings Clicking on this icon here in flight allows you to just check and maybe change your return to home altitudes, your max altitude, your max distance, all within this quick setting icon here. So again, you can get to this really easily and change that if you need to. Let's move on to quick shots. Quick shots are super fun and allow you to do automatic shots, which turn out to be brilliant and the drone can do it all on its own. For beginners, these are fantastic, but they're always set at 1080p at resolution out of the box. So when you are doing your quick shots, make sure you click on that res button we talked about before and change it from 1080p to 4K. The file sizes are gonna be bigger, but the quality is gonna be much, much better as well. It also allows you, if you wish, you can then crop in or maybe zoom in and get better results. How are we getting on? It's a lot to take in, isn't it? Maybe a break here, go and get another coffee and then come back. Only four more to go. And if you stick around to the end, we've got a nice bonus as well. So raw photos, let's click these icons here. Let's do a photo single. Now under format at the bottom, you'll see it's JPEG. Let's change that to JPEG and raw. This will then capture both types of photo. Now the raw photos are gonna have a lot more data. They're gonna be bigger file sizes, but they capture so much more data when color grading or editing your photos the results are going to be spectacular. Now grid lines are turned off by default, turn these on. So let's just say I want to get this nice photo here and I don't know whether it's gonna be centered correctly or not. Now what grid lines do allow you to frame your photo perfectly. So let's just turn on the middle grid lines and this allows you to get this rule of thirds. So I can see now that I can get it completely nicely lined up and I can take a photo allowing me to get this pool of water directly in the center. I can click on it in focus and I can turn the exposure down by dragging it up or down 
down and then get a really nice photo. Now by clicking on the center point grid line as well, for doing rising shots, it allows me to make sure I'm completely in the center. So as I'm climbing up now, I'm using them grid lines to determine that my drone is perfectly in the middle. Another setting turn off is Auto HD Photo Sync. So let's look on camera settings as well and scroll down and look here, this needs to be turned on. And this will allow you then, whenever you take a photo on your drone, whether it's a panorama or a photo or a burst photo, this will then be saved to your phone camera roll. So you don't have to then go and get the memory card, it's automatically saved, brilliant. Now Signal has improved on the DJI Mini 2. Now under transmission settings here, we can see the frequency now uses a dual band option as well. So normally you have 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz. If you're in an area where you've got loads of buildings and poor Wi-Fi areas, then 5.8 gigahertz would be the normal one to choose and 2.4 for those outdoor middle of nowhere locations. But by switching it and keeping it on dual band, the drone will constantly keep changing to the best frequency for you so that way you're going to get the best signal without any hassle change that now now once you've mastered your drone and had some fun with it the best advice i can give you is get out of auto and into pro so by clicking on the bottom right hand corner you can see this then unlocks those pro settings and this allows you then to have complete control over that camera which is going to give you better results so you can change your shutter speed you can change the white balance the iso it allows you to get brilliant results in both photo and video. Now I've done a few videos on Pro and how to get into the Pro settings and how to use it and go and watch them if you wish, but it's a fantastic way. I always use Pro settings all the time and to use the Pro settings, you're also gonna have to use an ND filter. Now, unless it's night time, I always use an ND filter. It allows me to get these spectacular videos. I always take this little set around with me. So I've always got different ones depending on the lighting conditions, but it allows you to then have fantastic looking video. It reduces the reflections and glare off water. It has nice punch to the colors and it allows you to customize your shot and get the best possible quality. Now, you don't have to get with these straight away, but if you're after an accessory for your drone and you will be soon because you'll get the bug nd filters are number one the best one to get if you want the ones i use i'll put in the description below big congrats for getting to the end of this video so as a bonus i'm going to show you how you can use your phone to control the drone as well and also get that nice b-roll so when you're flying your drone like this you can switch over to your actual camera and then when you're on here you can click record and i can get a nice shot of the drone maybe it's taken off or landing but i've also got full control over them controller sticks as well so this is super unique i can't believe this works not many people know about this but it's a fantastic feature to use so go and enjoy having a mess about with this as well so i hope you enjoyed that video guys and it helped you out go and watch that back if you want to follow along and go over those steps again i did this early so if you're watching this early before christmas and someone is buying you this drone for christmas save this to your save to watch later part on youtube and then you can go and watch this back at christmas the main thing is have fun with this drone but remember it's got no position sensors on it so go through these settings make sure you're comfortable with everything before taking off and then go and find a nice open field and then go and practice, practice, practice. And if you are new around here, a like and subscribe will be really nice and it will allow you to get the best advice for tech and drone content. Take care, bye-bye.